in this example, I've got a GNS3 network running within the GNS3 VM. So both this Dynamips router on the left, router one, as well as the Cisco IOS V router running on the right are configured and running within the GNS3 VM. So how do I connect this network to the internet? To connect GNS3 VM networks to the internet, you need to download an appliance from the GNS3 marketplace. So go to gns3.com, click marketplace, click appliances, and then search for the internet for GNS3 VM. Here's a summary of the appliance. So this appliance simulates a domestic modem. It provides an IP address via DHCP and will NAT all connections to the internet without the need of using a cloud interface in your topologies. The IP subnet used is 172.16.0.0/16. Multiple internets will have different IP address ranges in the range 172.16.1.0 to 172.16.253.0 slash 24. So I'm gonna download the template. It's downloaded it to my local machine on my Mac. It's changed the extension to a text file. So I'm gonna change it back to GNS3 appliance. Now the process I'm showing you here is done using a Mac, but it's very similar when using a Windows PC. To import the appliance in GNS3, go to File, Import Appliance. The appliance that I wanna import is internet.gns3a. So I'm gonna select that and click Open. A summary of the appliance is shown here. This is similar to the information found on the GNS3 website. So I'm gonna click Next. The appliance should be used with a GNS3 VM. So that's what I'm gonna select, and I'm gonna click Next. Now in this example, the operating system of the appliance is missing. So I'm gonna click Download. That takes me to sourceforge.net, and it automatically downloads the appliance. So the appliance image has automatically been downloaded to my PC and is now available in the downloads directory. So I'm gonna click back, click next. And it's now found the image. If you don't wanna do it that way, you can simply click import and then point it to the image file. So there's the image file, I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna say yes to install the internet version 01 appliance. The following settings will be used by the appliance. I'm gonna click next. I'm told that the appliance will be available in the router category, and then I can just connect stuff to the appliance. Everything is automated. Now that's not entirely true, so I'm gonna show you how to resolve that in a moment. So I'm gonna click finish. I'm told that the appliance is installed, so I'm gonna click OK. So under router, I now have my internet appliance, which I can drag to my workspace. When I do that, I'm told that I need to upload the operating system to the GNS3 VM. So I'm gonna click yes. And what that does in the background is it uploads the image to the GNS3 VM. So here's my internet appliance. Here are my GNS3 routers. So all I need to do is connect one of my routers in my network to the internet cloud. So that's now been done. And what I can do now is start up my topology. Now the reason I said we need to do some additional configuration is I am running an additional network between my two GNS3 routers. This appliance has no visibility of the additional networks that I'm creating. It does NAT on traffic that it receives, but it's not aware of this network or any other networks that I create, such as the loopback address on router one, or the loopback address on router two, 
So what I'm gonna do here is enable network address translation on this virtual router so that router one can connect to the internet. So I'll open up a console to both routers. The two routers in this topology have been configured with IP addresses as well as a routing protocol. In this example, it's EIGRP. So on router two, which is the router on the right, I have a loopback address configured. I have an IP address configured on this interface. And I'm running EIGRP on the router. It has learnt about router one through EIGRP. So show IP EIGRP neighbors shows me that router one is an EIGRP neighbor. Now you don't have to use EIGRP. I'm simply using EIGRP in this example. You could use OSPF as an example if you prefer. On router one, this interface is connected to the internet. So I need to go onto that interface and type IP address DHCP and no shut the interface. So this interface should get an IP address from the internet appliance. Show IP interface brief. We can see that it has. This IP address has been allocated via DHCP. Show IP route. In this example, it's learnt a default route through DHCP. Default gateway is 172.16.32.1. So ping www.google.com. Notice the ping succeeds. Ping cisco.com. Ping succeeds. So all I had to do on this router is enable the interface and use DHCP, and the router can connect to the internet. Now router one on the left, show IP route, shows that the router hasn't got a gateway of last resort. This router is a Dynamips router, whereas the router on the right is an iOS V router. So we need to do some additional configuration on both these routers to make things work. So as an example, in EIGRP, we need to advertise the default route to router one. So router two needs to advertise a default route to router one so that router one can get to the internet. Now there's two ways to advertise a default route through EIGRP. You can either redistribute a static route or create a summary address on an interface. In this example, we'll redistribute a static route because that's the quickest and easiest way to do it. If we try and search for IP route in the configuration, it's not shown. I could, as an example, say redistribute static and press enter. Notice just by doing that, the default route is advertised to router one, even though we don't have a default route in the running configuration of the router. So on router one, in the EIGRP section, all we've done is enable EIGRP on all interfaces and redistribute a static route. And the default route that was learnt through DHCP is now advertised to router one. So router one has now got a default route to the internet. Let's see if it can ping google.com. Notice it can't. We have to enable IP domain lookup on this router. Because this router is running in Dynamips, it's using a default config that has the no IP domain lookup command specified. Here we don't have a DNS server, so we should configure a DNS server. So I'm gonna configure Google as the DNS server on router one. Notice the router is not able to get to Google, and that's because the internet appliance doesn't know about this network. So what we need to do on router two is enable NAT, or network address translation. So on interface gigabit 01, IP NAT outside. In this example, I've got a problem. NAT sometimes causes issues. 
IP NAT inside. Let's see if the router stays up. Looks like it's still functioning. I'll just save the configuration in case there's a problem. IP NAT inside source list one. Interface gigabit zero one. Overload. I'm gonna allow any address specified in access list one to be NATed on gigabit zero one. So access list one, permit. And in this example, I'm just gonna permit any. So any IP address in the internal network will be NATed. And notice now I can connect to google.com or cisco.com. So in summary, on router one, I had to specify IP domain lookup. I had to specify the name server. On router two, I had to enable NAT. So show run pipe include NAT. I specified that gigabit zero zero is the inside NAT interface. Gigabit zero one is the outside. So show run interface gigabit zero zero. Notice this is the inside interface for NAT. Gigabit zero one is the outside interface for NAT. I specified a NAT translation overloading this interface and we're using access list one, which is permitting all traffic. So that's how you get devices in a GNS3 VM access to the internet. Once again, router one can ping cisco.com, it can ping google.com, router two can ping google.com and cisco.com as an example. The IP addresses are allocated dynamically by the appliance to this router. We had to enable NAT and advertise a default route because the appliance doesn't know about the networks that we've created internally in GNS3. So don't forget to add redistribute static to EIGRP or if you decide to use OSPF, so let's enable OSPF. And I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces in area zero. Add to this command default information originate always. So I'll remove EIGRP. This router will no longer be able to ping the internet because it doesn't have routes in its routing table. So as an example, show IP route. Notice no routes in the routing table because EIGRP is disabled on router two. So router OSPF1, network 000, area zero, show IP route. We have to wait for OSPF to update the routing table, but notice this router has now learnt a default route. So ping google.com, ping cisco.com. That works. So in OSPF, don't forget to add default information originate. The always keyword isn't necessary it just means that this router is gonna always advertise a default route, even when it doesn't have a default route advertised to it. So that's how you give your GNS3 network internet access when using the GNS3 VM.